afternoon, Cherries fans, and welcome to this latest opposition preview show here at Up the Cherries in All Departments. Now, before I welcome on my special guest, here's a little bit about our sponsors, Dental on the Banks. To find out what they can do for you, visit dentalonthebanks.co.uk. Now, of course, we drew two all up at Fulham at Craven Cottage on Saturday. Of course, on Wednesday, we have the visit of Southampton, um, a team that, let's be honest, when we got the fixture list, that was the first one we was looking for. It was anyway for me. Um, of course, they are in the relegation zone at the moment with a whole deal of problems with Ralph Hasenhutl at the helm. And it could be possibly if he was to be beaten in this game, the end of his time at St. Mary's. It is a pleasure to welcome onto the show though, to preview this game, glamour model, Alex Letizier. Afternoon, Alex. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Yes, very well. And thank you so much for joining us on this show. So, of course, we are probably classed as rivals in the Premier League. Although, saying that, would you see us as a rival or do you think that's still that's still Portsmouth's? Um, I feel like you guys are desperate for it because... (laughs) (laughs) I think it's always... Obviously, it's more fun when you have a rival and... um... You know, the match days are better and it's just more of an atmosphere and a vibe. But I do just feel, obviously, given the history of Southampton and Portsmouth are always going to be rivals. But obviously with Bournemouth now, it's kind of like your third wheeling, isn't it? Yeah. It's like you're kind of like Southampton and Portsmouth. Yeah. Like you're kind of just stuck in the middle, I guess. But um. I think a lot of Bournemouth fans, they've said to me that, you know, they have like hinted that we're rivals. So I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we're I... not yet for Southampton fans, but you yeah. know, it's good fun, isn't it? And it just... is obviously when it's close by, yeah. When you when you when a game like when two teams are live close by, um, go against each other, yeah, it's always a big deal. It's like I grew up in Guernsey, so when we used to play Jersey like it's a massive deal um so yeah it's it's getting there i think for bournemouth i think bournemouth is still it's just so new i think yeah even though like you know they've made their mark i just think it's still so new so maybe it's that yeah well we're quite happy to be your rivals and happy to be in the premier league and yes of exactly course, huge game on wednesday mm-hmm. night um you drew yesterday with West Ham one all, and it was a game where you was ahead and then mm. you got pegged back. Um, do you think that Ralph Hasenhutl's job is at risk now? Yes, but um, I think for some reason the club really backs him. 
<laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know many managers who would have been able to go through two nine nils and still have their job. Yeah. Um, and also all these little things that keep coming out. He doesn't really talk to the players and uh, how he's coming across to the press when he says like he's not concerned about things. <laughs> I mean, as a sub supporter, I'm a bit like. Well, I'm concerned. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we got beat 9-0. <laughs> <talk> so <laughs> we um, joined like, you in that. Yeah, but I just think, I don't really know. I think it's very like Brexit among, amongst the fans because you're either for him or you're against him. Mm -hmm. um, I've always, not always, obviously, but um, from quite early and I didn't like him. I don't like him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I won't be sad to see him go. But it's like one of those things where you can open a can of worms because people then say like, oh, you know, well, he's kept you up and all that. I just really disagree with what they say. Like, I just mm. think, you know, when, we, when you look at our squad now, I think in a few years time, because a lot of, a lot of our squad is so young. Yeah. I think in a few years' time, we're looking at a really strong, a really strong team. But it's just not, I feel like it's just not going to get to that level because we don't have the leadership and we don't have the manager. I don't know what's happened to um, James Ward Prowse either. I just don't really, he's not got that leadership. I mean, he's been brilliant, but it's just this season, I just don't really see it. So there's nothing, there's nothing that on the pitch it all comes together. And with West Ham, it was just the classic first half. Yeah, good. And then we have this like second half curse where yeah. obviously it's what goes on in, in the changing rooms. It's not, there's no leadership vibe. There's nothing. I don't know how Ralph is talking to the team. It's obviously not very good because when they come out, the energy, it just goes. There's no, there's nothing. There's no passion. And um, it's happened a lot of times. It's low so many times. First half, yeah. Second half. Mm. And that reminds me a little bit of our 9-0 defeat. So we have joined you on that as well. Um, yes. Albeit, we've only got the one, Alex. You've yeah, and what happened? Story. And what happened after that? Well, Scott Parker got sacked. So, exactly. do you think Ralph Hasenhutl should have been fired the first time after that 9-0? Or do you believe that there was enough belief? Because you were struggling at that time when that happened as well, weren't you? Exactly. Exactly. Like, on paper, we weren't a strong, we weren't a strong side. And um, it really annoys me because I think, obviously, sometimes if you don't follow a team, like, I know, like, some football fans, they, they just follow their team and... And all the rest of it, I understand that. And obviously, some people just don't have time to watch every other team. But I feel like with us, if you actually know, if you actually know your stuff about Southampton, we don't have crap players. Mm. We have good, we have good players, but it's just like we don't see, we don't see their full potential. We don't see it. So really, he he should have just done. He should. He's had chances. You know, everyone's like, we need to buy more players. You know, we've got this owner. He's got a lot of money. And what he's doing seems to be great. Buy, buying all this really young talent, incredible talent. And um, it's just still giving nothing. So I don't, I just don't get it. He's wanted all the coaches. He's got all these coaches around him and all the rest of it. I just feel he's a bad energy of the club and... Yeah, he should have left after the first nine nil. But like I said, I mean, I don't know what's going. I think the club really back him. They they obviously see something that we don't, and of course they do, like behind the scenes. But when you have players come out and sort of hint that he doesn't talk to them, I just think, what's going on? Does he have nudes of, <laughs> of the club? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> oh, it's just so it's just bizarre to me. But I don't. What I will say is though, like with obviously some situations where it's like a two nine nils, I mean, I think that's ridiculous. But 
I think some of the fans have got so upset now that even if we play like huge teams like Liverpool or, you know, Man City or anything like that, they all kick off. And I'm like, come on, we have to be a little bit realistic. Yeah. Most teams are going to get battered by them. And that's that, you know. So I think now it's gone so like the other way where people are just not really thinking rationally. But I can see, you know, from things like the West Ham game, I think we could have done so much better there. You have got two victories so far, two victories, two draws. Um, the two victories come against Chelsea and Leicester. What were the story of those games? It's just like, yeah, Southampton is so weird. Like I said, like you'll play against a team where you think, I think we've got this. I, I think we've got, you know, a chance and they do terrible and then you go up against Chelsea where you think, you know, well, here we go. <laughs> and it's just so weird. I don't mm. know. Maybe the team just think, let's just give it our all against the bigger teams. I don't know. But it doesn't make sense. It's such a weird... It's, it's weird being a Southampton fan because it's just like yeah. a horrible <laughs> rollercoaster. <laughs> Because after that 9-0, you did bounce back a little bit like we have. Yeah, yeah. I think you have to because, you know, it's almost like you kind of hit rock, rock bottom what could be worse. So sometimes in life it's good when you, you fall so low, you fall down so yeah. hard because the only way is up. And I felt like, yeah, there was a moment in time where we really like picked ourselves up and everything seemed to be... And I guess, I don't know, maybe it's a combination of you know, some of the the press that's come out about Ralph and how, you know, all these little things and no matter who you are in life, it's going to, it's going to leak like negativity mm -hmm. onto the club and everyone feels it. And, you know, like if everything in life, if, if your workplace was like gossiping about you or there was things being said about your workplace in the press, you, there's going to be a bad energy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, I think one day we'll probably find out what's been happening. It might be something, Ralph might write a book or something. I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know what the hell goes behind those closed doors. Of course, Southampton have had some really, really good managers in the past. So Nigel Atkins got the club back into the Premier League. Um, and then that was really weird because he put up a yeah. sign, didn't he? Um, when he left the club and I didn't understand why they got rid of him yeah there's it just happens sometimes doesn't it I mean at the moment you've got like Liverpool fans asking Klopp to leave yeah and um sometimes you forget all the great things that these people do for the club um it's it is short-term memory loss I mean i I just find it bizarre with Liverpool fans wanting Klopp to leave. I just think that man has done incredible things. It's literally the dream what he's done for them. Um, and yeah, the same with Nigel. I just think he's such a lovely guy. And um, I, didn't, I can't remember what team it was that he went on to. And he's been, didn't he get sacked by them? Yeah, he was ready. Recently. Yeah. It's sad, yeah. isn't it? Because I think sometimes... Yeah, I just think Nigel, he's just, he comes across as such a lovely man. Mm. Um, like, he's tweeted me, like, really cute things before, like, like supportive and really positive. And I think he's a really nice man. And sometimes in life, life just treats the nice people badly, doesn't it? It's just... Yeah. Yeah. Football can be savage, though. Like, um, I mean, it would be really hard being a manager, having to put up with that. You'd have to have like very thick skin I think because football fans I mean I get small dosed of it of course Pochettino uh, took over from Nigel and you know he did well and then yeah. Koeman took over Ronald Koeman um, and mm. you have had some really good managers um, you know at the start of the spell in the Premier League and I know that's going back a little while um, but since then, some of the managerial changes haven't really been that good. Um, look no. at Pellegrino, for example. Um, 
even though he come with a bit of pedigree, he didn't do particularly very well. And well, Mark Hughes, I don't know what you think about him. It's um, the one that my husband hates the most is Puel. <laughs> Pure. <laughs> is that how you say it? Pure or Puel? <laughs> Rich. <laughs> I can't hear him. I feel like he says, "Yeah." From what Mitch says, we used to call him Fraud Puel. Fraud Puel, but um, but it's just, I guess, um, you know, with football, it's like everyone has their different opinion and things, and also they have their own way of how they would play things. So some people are going to love certain managers, and some people are not. Yeah. For me, like the reason why. I, as a fan, like, haven't really, like, I want to say click with Ralph, but obviously I don't know him personally. I'm sure he's a lovely man, but it's, like, with me, I don't... I'm a very, like, optimistic person, and I think there's one thing being optimistic, and then there's one thing just being kind of arrogant and not really seeing things for how it is. You know, coming yeah. out and saying, you know, I've, you know, I'm not worried, I've got no concerns. I just think... Can't you just be a little bit honest? Yeah. And actually talk to people. <laughs> yeah. Communicate with your squad. Like, there's obviously, that's just, yeah, it's, I, need, I need more positivity. That's why I love Nigel. I just think he's such a positive, like I said, like everyone has their own vibe of what they like. And I think that's why I like Nigel, because I just think he's really positive and did things totally different. Yeah. I just think with Southampton, I just think, it's just become a stepping stone mm -hmm. for people, managers and players. And I don't think people see its full potential or treat it really. Like they don't treat it properly like a Premier League club. They just treat it as like this little sandwich filler in the table. And it just annoys me a little bit because if you started actually, no, actually we are, we are in, you know, we are a big club. So let's act like it. The thing is, is you mentioned there James Ward-Prowse, and I, I was surprised he stayed at Southampton, in all mm -hmm. fairness, because there was quite a lot of clubs looking at him. And he hasn't performed particularly very well this season, you feel? No, I think he's... I think someone like him, again, we don't, I don't know him, but for me, he comes across as an authentic person. And I think it was a bit like, well, actually, no, it's a bit of a different, I was about to say it was a bit like Harry Kane, you know, where he went a bit, he wasn't really playing up to his standard. I think it was obvious to everyone that he wanted to go. Yeah. But um, I guess then Harry Kane just realised, actually, this is where I'm meant to be. And now he's playing back to his full potential. But I think with James Ward Prowse, Maybe there is an element that he's thinking, should I have gone? Because from a from a sport from a sportsman point of view, it's like you want you want to have the most out of your career. Yeah. Like a lot of Saints fans are bitter that Van Dyke left. Mm. But you know, he was the best in the world. Yeah. At that point in his position. And it's like of course he's going to go on to a bigger club and get as much as get as much out of his career as possible and I don't resent him for that at all but is James Ward Prowse sat there thinking you know maybe if I played for Liverpool maybe if I played for Man United I would be playing for England more and I would be you know doing more out of my career I don't know because people do people do see Southampton as like the smaller one of the smaller clubs yeah, of course, you have had quite a lot of big names there. Um, Gareth Bale, <laughs> Theo Walcott. Um, so the Southampton Academy has produced some real talent throughout yeah. the years. Is there any up and coming players at Southampton that you feel that these are great players that we need to keep hold of this time round? Uh, probably Bella. Yeah. I mean, he's just like the golden boy at the moment. Mm -hmm. But is he going to stay? 
Well, that's that's the thing is, it seems to be that there's a lot of these young players just seem to be at Southampton and then move on quite quickly, don't they? I mean, it's a stepping stone. This is the thing. I mean, the academy. We obviously have like such talented people within that academy to train these players and get them up to scratch of being, you know, like I, like I said, some of the best in the world. Yeah. Why can't we have the energy through the club? <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. But you have made some decent signings as well. And one player that did jump out to me was Arebo. Um, yeah. Can you tell me a bit more about him? They just, like I said, it's just so many new young um, there's so many new young players that it just it's like oh wow like this is good but I feel like at the moment they're still like really inexperienced and um, it's just going to take a few years I think to really see the full potential mm-hmm. I just really hope that they stay with us you know we spent some money we've got we've got good we've got a good chance in the future Um I just feel like Ralph, I feel like Ralph doesn't give the younger players as much of a chance as he should. Yeah. Not so much this season. I think he's gotten a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Last year, oh my God, <laughs> it just used to blow my mind. He would be still, you know, like playing Shane Long and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. that just... I just don't get that. But I think, yeah, we've we've moved on from that. I think he's gotten a little bit better. But it's about it's about molding them. And I think if the if the older players aren't feeling positive within the club, you know, the younger ones look up to the older players and yeah. they need that as well. They need the they need the drive. And if these other bigger clubs, I mean, they're probably all gonna be at Liverpool next year. <laughs> Yeah, well, take everyone. that seems to be the destination for Southampton players. And, you know, um, touch wood for you guys, you know, moving forwards, it isn't. But, um, you know, just looking at your squads, you have got such a young side mm. this season. Um, you know, I know that there's Theo Walcott, is, you know, was on the books. Um, and... It is a young, young team. Yeah. Um, you are currently in the relegation zone. Of course, that's probably a big concern of if you do end up getting relegated, will these players just move on? Yeah. And I and I, I don't blame them. Mm. Would you want to stick with the ship? Yeah. When you're really very talented, you're very talented and you're young and you have your whole career ahead of you. You will be pinched and, you know, fair enough. I kind of do think in a way it would be really good for us if we went down. Do like you? I said, sometimes you've got to fall down mm. really hard to come back up again. And I think at the moment, the last few years, it's about, right, Just let's just try and stay up. Let's just try and stay up. That's not real, really what football's about. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not what. It's not what the game's about. It's not about let's just try and stay up. That that's just boring. That whole that whole thing is boring. I think we actually need to go down to go back up again and come back stronger. Yeah. I mean, it really. It, I did think we were going to go down last year. To be honest, it really wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me if we went. If we went down. You know, it is an exciting league, the championship, and I'm sure, you know... It really going... is, yeah. It really is. That's what I mean. It, it's, at least it's going to be enjoyable. It's not going to be like... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> another draw. Another draw. It's just like, come on. Something's got to give. So I think, actually, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. I think tickets would be cheaper as well, right? <laughs> they probably would do, to be fair. Although saying that, um, you yeah. know, our ground is very, very small. Um, of course, we've got a new her- owner on the horizon. So, you know, if both sides, 
you know, stay in the Premier League, which hopefully touch wood we will do. Yeah. Because, you know, it could build up to be a lot bigger rivalry in the future, seeing as Portsmouth yes. um, are yeah, nowhere Portsmouth, to be seen. Portsmouth are just nowhere to be seen. <laughs> just nowhere to be seen. So, yeah, probably... Yeah, definitely. Um, is there any Bournemouth players that you feel, or what, what have you made of Bournemouth so far this season? <laughs> um, I've had like a, a like a funny little situation with one of the Bournemouth players. So, no, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> no, I just I feel like. I feel like you guys have had some very hard hits, mm-hmm. massively. Yeah, but like, I mean, you did the right thing there. You got rid of the manager, so I think you know, you guys are sort of very cutthroat with things. I I appreciate that. And of course, we, you know, unbeaten in six. So would it surprise you? All right. <laughs> <laughs> would, would it surprise you if you come down to Dean Court and end up on the end of another defeat? Yeah, because I feel like yeah, because you guys started off pretty bad, and then you yeah. you picked it up, didn't you? Like we said before, you picked it up massively, but then maybe you guys are going to fall again because that's what happened to us. Well, hopefully not. Hopefully not. You know, I, I'm oh, hoping I so. we don't. <laughs> but, but you know, I think. I think with Gary O'Neill at the helm, I think, you know, he's doing a fantastic job and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll just keep going from strength to strength to strength to strength. But, yeah. of course, we have got this new own on, on the way. And, you know, I wonder, you know, if we're going to sign quite a few, you know, players or have money to spend, you know, could it be a case that we... We are the biggest club on the South Coast, eventually. Maybe, because yeah. you are at the moment, to be fair. Probably. Like, there's nothing stopping you, really. I mean, I do, I do think, though, with some things, sometimes it's not really about the money. Mm-hmm. Like, if you look at, if you look at Reps and FC. Yeah. Sometimes it's not the money. It's, it's like... It's a bit like if you look at the England squad. Yeah. Some managers, like, they'll just get the best of the best. They'll go around to the different teams, they'll look at the best of the best, and they all just kind of lump them together. That's not necessarily going to work. Yeah. And that's not how Southgate does it. He does it by, you know, he looks around and he thinks, right, is this going to work together? Which I think, you know, is a little bit controversial because it's not what the past England managers have done. Yeah. So it's all well and good getting an owner and being like throwing money. Sometimes it's, I just think that's probably the most complicated thing about football. Sometimes the team doesn't work together regardless of how much talent there is. I think as that's maybe a little bit of why Southampton isn't working just because yes, we've got really like young talented squad, but maybe it's just not molding together. Yeah, of course. Let what we'll do is we'll speak about what you do for a living as well, and the charity work that you've done as well. Um, but then we'll go back on to the prediction, shall we? What do you reckon? Okay. So, of course, um, you do raise quite a bit of money at the moment as well for children in the community. Do tell us a little bit more about that, Alex. Um. I did. I got dropped from the charity about three days ago. <laughs> did you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, I'm going to continue to do... Um, so I do this football tournament every uh, year. Yeah. Um, and the last one we did, I was, I was a little bit worried, to be honest with you, because I thought, because of my job and everything it was the first time I'd done a football tournament with the career I'm in and um it was the biggest turnout that we've ever had Mm -hmm. and it went so well so I just think going forward 
going to do that, but maybe for like different a different cause each year. Yeah. Or you know, do like a gen a general vote amongst you know those who are up for doing it. I don't know something like that, but yeah, the ALT five side tournament. Like I, I feel, you know, it's the least I can do. It's just organizing a five side tournament, and it raises a lot of money. So, I think still doing that, and obviously, you know, I do I do my fair bit here and there. I don't, you know, I know some people like to put it all over social media, but I don't really. We do loads of things, you know, like food. We donate to yeah. things all the time, and. Uh, I'm in a fortunate position now where I can do that so it only feels right to do that because like I would have loved help when I was struggling back in the day so it's I feel like I should do that sort of thing but um, yeah I love I do love helping people and you know it's sad that things have happened and just got to move on I guess and understand that not everyone's just going to not everyone's going to see things from your point of view and that's fine, but it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. Um, and of course you are a glamour model. Do tell us a little bit more about that. And also do tell us a bit more about your website. What I'll do is I'll make you full screen as well, Alex, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Hi. Um, yeah. So I am a babe station TV model. Um, so I'm on your TV screens every week. And I have, I do OnlyFans, um, I'm in the top 1%, so I'm very lucky and um, I just love doing the content, I love being creative with it. I uh, recently, I think it was, well, it was three months ago now, my whole life changed. Three months ago, I did a, uh, like a reality TV documentary about my job and um people warm to me and I have like this whole new wave of supporters and things from that. So yeah. And it's just, my whole life's just gone a bit crazy now to be honest with you. But yeah. Oh, amazing stuff. Um, what's your website address? Do tell everybody. Well, I just, I have all my links and everything on Yeah, I think it's that. It's all, it's all in my bio on social media. So it's alexdissier.com. I kind of have everything. I've got my TV schedule. I've got blog posts on there. I've got recent YouTube videos on there. I've got my OnlyFans, everything. So, yeah. Excellent stuff. And let's talk about this big game. So, of course, we are we're desperate to win this game. I'll be yeah. perfectly honest. We haven't played Southampton for a while. The last time was in the Cup. Um, of course, Southampton probably dealt the fatal blow to us when we were relegated from the Premier League last time around. So we are desperate to win this game. But this could potentially be the end of Ralph Hassan Hootel's time at Southampton. Yeah. Um, and I guess from what you said, that might not necessarily be the worst scenario for a Southampton fan. I feel at the moment Bournemouth probably going to win. Mm -hmm. you're the first person to say that actually Alex on the show well like we've just spoken about though you know you think you're going to lose against Chelsea mm -hmm. like I said it's Southampton's a weird one maybe they think they're going to beat Bournemouth and then they end up it being a draw or they lose I, I don't think we're going to win I think it's going to be 2-1 2-1 to Bournemouth mm. I'd go with that you know, I'd be more than happy with that, to be honest. Um, I'd be well chuffed. Or is this, are you trying reverse psychology on me, Alex? No, I, I genuinely, <laughs> I have like a weird gut feeling. It's going to be so funny if they actually win 2-1. You'll be like, <sighs> yeah, that's what she meant. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's been absolutely lovely to speak to you and just keep oh, up all the so great me. work. Um, and, you know, Thank you so much. And, you know, are you going to be going to the game or? I'm not going to the game. I So people, people like make fun of me because I don't really get to go to the games much. I'm so busy. Um, November, hopefully. Oh, do you know? Because it's the World Cup, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe next year. Next, next year. Time. 
Maybe we should go together next time. Exactly. That's what we're going to do. That's yeah. what we're going to do. I'm going <laughs> to come to St Mary's and we'll go and watch the game together, shall we? Yes, let's do it. Albeit, I don't know if I really want to sit in the Southampton end. No. No, don't. Yeah. There's a lot of rowdiness at the moment. Yeah, not allowed to stand <laughs> up. Not allowed to do this, this and this. I don't think I could keep my mouth quiet, but um, yeah, it has been <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure, Alex. And you know, please do keep in contact. And yes, thank you so oh, much yeah. for coming on. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks. My pleasure. Bye. Yeah, that and thank you everybody for joining me on this opposition preview show. Please do remember to hit the like, the subscribe, and the bell button below to be alerted to any new videos we do here at Up the Cherries in all departments. Please do also remember to check out our interviews with James Hayter. We've also had Lee Bradbury as well as many more on this show. So it'll be a pleasure to have you to watch those and let us know what you think. Until the next video up the cherries and I'll see you then. Thank you for joining us.